and welcome to this extra special episode of the Stress Knits podcast. My name is Stacy, also known as Stress Knits Yarn on Instagram and Stress Knits on Ravelry. I am the dyer behind Stress Knits Yarns. I'm coming to you from Metro Detroit, Michigan, where I live in this house with my husband Doug, our daughter Eliza, and our pug puppy Esther. Now, this has been a wild ride and a year in the making and I have a lot of feelings about it. There's also a blog post that accompanies this that talks more about my personal journey through what I dubbed my year of Andrea, which started July of 2018 and ran through the end of July of 2019. And here we are on the other end. It's over. <laughs> it's crazy that I started this idea in the hospital when I was waiting for my daughter Eliza to arrive. For those of you who are new, uh, I talked about this plenty of times and I've talked about the origin of the year of Andrea, but since this is the comprehensive video over the year of Andrea, I thought I would just share the story of how it came to be, show you all of the projects, and give you some thoughts. So, my water broke at 32 weeks, which is very early. That's two months early, and um, I was put in the hospital in an antepartum room. I was not allowed to leave until my daughter was born. And they told me that she was only going to be able to stay in for two more weeks and then they were going to have to take her out. Um, so I did make it the full two weeks, which is really exciting. But because my water was broken and I was open, both Eliza and I got horrible infections. And so um, she would have had to be in the NICU anyway, but she had an extended stay which wasn't really that long, but she had a two week, one day stay in the NICU for low birth rate. She was three pounds, one ounce and went down to 214. And then um, she had a really bad infection that was the, the same one that I had. And they told us that if this antibiotic doesn't fix it, then we're probably not going to make it. So we were very lucky. Um, but because I was in the hospital for a month, two weeks before and two weeks after her birth, I didn't really have much to do except for knit and listen and watch podcasts. So that's what I did. And while when I there were times where I didn't feel like knitting or it was too hot in my room and I was sweaty or I was in a lot of pain or just whatever, and so I would constantly scan Ravelry, put things in my queue, buy some patterns, buy some yarn, you know, just kind of do something <laughs> besides knitting. And so while I was scrolling through my queue one day, I realized that the majority of my queue, probably about 90% of it, were Andrea Mowry patterns. And so I decided to challenge myself to do one Andrea Mowry cast on a month for an entire year which is crazy. But she has so many amazing patterns that I hadn't knit yet that I thought would be, it'd be a great way to get through a lot of her designs. So this was coming off the heels of the four day Harlow hat challenge. So when I got out of the hospital at the beginning of July, I decided my first cast on should be the hat that kind of inspired it all because I was looking at her Instagram at all of the Harlow hats that had been posted and all of that jazz. And so I cast on my Harlow hat and this is the first project of my year of Andrea. So clearly all of these patterns are by Andrea Mowry because it is a year of Andrea. <laughs> so I'm not going to say, I will just talk about the pattern and the yarn and some thoughts about it. Uh, again, I'm not going to get too personal in this because there's a blog post for that and I think I'm better um, in the written word than I am in the spoken word when it comes to that kind of stuff, but there are a few projects that made me realize things about myself that I will go further in depth. So, the Harlow hat. <laughs> it is a simple brioche, two color, two color brioche hat 
all the way up with some simple brioche decreases, which was a new technique that I learned. The other new technique that I learned in this hat was the two color tubular cast on to create a perfectly reversible hat. So I do wear this hat. I'm not going to put it on because I actually like my hair today, which is shocking. Um, but I do wear this hat. I wore it quite a bit last winter and it's just cozy. I used I used Quince & Company Finch in the Oatwing colorway, which is honestly one of my favorite Quince & Company colors. It's a perfect oatmeal, just natural color. And then the contrast color is two colors of Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. Now, I changed my mind when I was knitting this. I originally started with Deep Bump, which is this green colorway. And then I got to here and I wanted to cast something else on for the year of Andrea in, what month was it, October? And I still hadn't finished this hat yet and I was still about here and I, I still have ends to weave in. But I don't wear it on this side so it doesn't bother me. Um, and I decided that I would just cut it and knit the rest with Verbo Volant. And I really love how it turned out. It's it's a great hat. Um, I made plenty of mistakes. My beginning of the round was not very good because I was using um, Magic Loop and my Magic Loop brioche um, is not the greatest or neatest. So you have this weird little panel that's really not great. And then I also, I did the wrong stitch for a few and I didn't go back and fix it. So there's that little blip, but I put that in the back or in the side and wear it. And it's just nice and slouchy. I knit the large size because I like a big slouchy hat and it does, it does just that. So there's really nothing else to say about this except for it's a great hat pattern. And it's, I think this is a really great way to learn brioche. Once you get past the cast on, the cast on is really tricky. It took me a good, four times maybe more to get the cast on but just put headphones in with the video tutorial that she links in the pattern do nothing else just go into a room by yourself and do this cast on or just do a tubular cast on or a long tail cast on with just one of the colors if the reversible thing doesn't matter to you so there is my harlow hat project number one this podcast is being powered by Starbucks pumpkin cold brew. Now I did, side note, this, <laughs> they came out with a new pumpkin foam cold brew and I bought it today for Doug and I to try along with our favorite fall beverages. He likes a salted caramel mocha and I like my regular cold brew with just uh, two to three pumps of pumpkin spice in it. So good, okay. Anyway, and it's delicious. All of it's delicious. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, the next pattern that I cast on was a test knit, and that was such a big deal for me. So it was, this is August of 2017. I just had my baby. I am struggling hard to keep up my breast milk supply. I am pumping for... 30 to 45 minute sessions just to get two ounces and so that's not enough if you don't know to keep up with um, the supply needed for a growing baby and also because she was low weight we brought her home when she was four pounds one ounce we brought her home yeah I think that's what she was so like, she barely passed the car seat test we almost had to go buy a car seat where she can lay down in but we just had, they had us like put blankets and stuff around her. So um, she was too small to latch on and feed on her own. So I had to pump and they wanted us to supplement with um, a condensed formula to add calories to make her grow quicker because they were worried about her birth weight. So I was, we were already buying formula. And so this was just that time where I felt I just felt like less than 
I was super jealous of all of the women in my life who could breastfeed and had no issues. I was really jealous of the bonding that they had with her because I just didn't. I was also struggling with postpartum depression really, really badly. And my husband Doug had to go out of town during this time. And so um, it was just hard and I really wanted something to focus on when Eliza wasn't napping when Eliza was napping so that I could just kind of turn my brain off and do something else besides think about all the ways I was failing even though I wasn't failing but it felt like that at the time so um and for because this was also the time where I was doing like power pump sessions and if you don't know what that is it's like 15 to 20 minutes of pumping every hour for like two days and it was the worst and it wasn't worth it, if I'm being honest. Because <laughs> um, my body still wasn't producing. I did all the cookies and the tea and having a beer a day and I <sighs> did everything and my body just didn't want to do it. I was also on medication for my pain because I, during this time I was also still using um, my wound vac to heal my C-section scar and having it changed out every other day, which meant them pulling a piece of like steel wool out of my open incision and then stuffing me back it, it was awful so I was having a really hard time I told you I wasn't going to get too personal and here I am getting personal but this is this was my life and it was one of the hardest seasons of my life and so to be picked for a test knit for my favorite designer especially the Rhinebeck test knit, which I wasn't able to go to last year. It just felt super special. So I purchased the spin cycle for it. And so I decided to use Salty Dog. Salty Dog is the yellow. Deep Bump is the green and Melancholia is the blue. The, this is Dream State, the spin cycle worsted. And then I used Shepherd's Wool worsted and I think it's like the oatmeal colorway or like the Sandbanks colorway or something like that. Um, now, let me, this is one of those sweaters that after the fact, I hated. I loved knitting it. It was a super fun knit. Since it was a test knit, I didn't steak or anything. I did all the color work flat, which was a challenge, but I actually enjoyed it. It was great. Um, this sweater was exactly what I needed for that time in my life. It distracted me enough. I was so stressed out about not finishing on time, which was nice to stress out about something besides breastfeeding and my daughter growing. <laughs> it was really nice. So this was all knit during nap times, <laughs> which is amazing. Or there, my, since Doug was out of town, my mom would come over and give me like, an hour or two where I just went into my room and I just sat and I would sleep or I would knit and it was just magical. <laughs> so anyway, um, but when I finished this sweater, I hated it. Um, I hated the way it looked on me. I thought I was not pretty. I didn't feel, I didn't feel good in my body. Again, postpartum depression and just dealing with a postpartum body that changed so drastically because of medication that I was on afterwards because um, I lost some weight and then they gave me some medication and I gained a bunch of it back and then some so I was I just felt out of control I felt like I didn't have control over my body and just dealing with all of that I didn't feel good in the sweater but now and I haven't worn this since I took the pictures for the finished object photos like I have not put this on since and it kind of bums me out because I love this I love this sweater I think it looks really good right now and it's making me so excited that I'm going to wear this this fall and winter um it makes me want to knit another one in different colors but I love it I really do um yeah so I'm gonna stand up and show this to you so this is the size five. I don't remember what that is. Is my fly open? No. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it just, it fits perfectly. It hits right where I like my cardigans to hit. 
and obviously the sleeves are long, but she calls for you to do that so that you can roll it up. So both my sleeves are rolled up. My favorite part of this sweater is the four by four rib at the hem. I love this. I want more sweaters to have it. <sighs> I just love it. It's, I was always skeptical about yoked sweaters and how they would fit me with a larger bust in my arms and like all, oh, I almost fell out of my chair. Um, but yeah, so now that I am taking better care of both my body and my brain, <laughs> because I, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm taking better care of myself and I am going to therapy to figure out a lot of the things that I was struggling with and it's helped so much and it just feels, oh, I don't know, okay. And it just feels so good to put something on my body that I made and feel proud of it because for the longest time I did not feel that way. So I didn't think that was gonna make me feel things, but it did. This is the throwback. I love it. You're gonna see this a lot more this fall and winter. So after I knit that, I wanted something super soft and pretty. And so I knew I wanted to knit Birds of a Feather for this knit along, but I just didn't know what color I wanted it in. And part of me wanted it in pinks, and then I thought, no, I kind of want a mint one, but I didn't have the right mint yarn. So I have a semi-solid mint, but it leans more blue. It's called Pillow Mint, and um, this is Stress Knits yarn. I don't remember if I said that, but actually, it's this color right here. Do you see this mint? No. This mint color right here? So that's Pillow Mint. And I thought about using that, but I was like, you know what, I kind of want to create a more green mint and with darker speckles. And so I did that. That is my succulents colorway. So it's, to me, it's the perfect mint green. And I love the dark olivey speckles that also, when the dye breaks, it kind of breaks blue and sometimes it breaks hot pink and... I love it. So this is birds of a feather. I have the ends knotted because I'm short and it looks ridiculous <laughs> when it's not knotted. So this is a very, very large shawl. It takes a skein and a half of the main one. So I used my singles base and then it takes one skein of mohair and I used almost all of it. And this is my sorry <laughs> this is my halo base and they're both in the succulents colorway and the pattern alternates between a um a garter in the mane a garter in the mohair and then a feather and fan lace in the regular yarn that's not mohair <laughs> and I love this I'm so happy that I finished <laughs> but this, this was a labor of love. I cast this on in September of last year and I didn't finish until like March or April. It, it's just one of those things where I, I had full steam at the beginning and I was knitting a few sections a day and then the rows got really long and then I realized how much I hate knitting mohair by itself and then I just... I didn't like the needles I was using because I was using Knitter's Pride Carbons, which I used to love. And I love them occasionally. I like them for hat knitting, actually. But I didn't like them for this. It just wasn't right. So I this took a time out for a long time. I even thought about paying someone to finish it for me. And I had like eight sections left so it's really not that much but it's still a lot of knitting when you're talking about this shawl um but yeah it's just it's beautiful it's light it's airy this is something I will wear all the time when the weather permits um, because when I finished it, it started getting really warm and it's just not 
yeah. <laughs> so, um, Birds of a Feather, I love it. This was my September cast on for my year of Andrea. And it took me a really long time to finish. It's not the longest thing that was on my needles. There's still one thing that's on my needles. But, yes, I love it. And I think the color's really great and... Yeah, I just, I love this shawl. But when I was knitting this shawl and I realized that <laughs> it was just taking a really long time, I decided to knit um, something that was smaller and um, with more interest in the pattern, if that makes sense. Because this is a very... I don't know, straightforward garter mostly with an occasional um, easy lace chart. But I kind of wanted something different. I wanted something with more colors. I wanted something woolier. I want something that would go fast. So I cast on the shift cowl. So this is October. Yes, October. And here's my shift cowl. This is not, these are not the original colors. I actually just bought a kit of the original colors because I've wanted them for so long, specifically for these two. I don't really like this one as much, but it's Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool. The original is in The Meadows, The Castle, and Leith, but I used, see, it's very similar, but it's not the same. I used Melancholia for the dark blue, Deep Bump for the green, and then for like the bluey purple is uh, Dead Reckoning. And these are three of my favorite spin cycle colorways. I'm not going to put it on because, well, maybe I will. Let's try not to mess up. Okay, so I'm not a big cowl person. And I really think my feelings about this did tie in to how I was feeling about myself. Because when I finished this, I loved knitting it. I loved the yarn. I loved everything about it, except for when I put it on, I didn't like the way it looked. And I really do think it was my self-esteem and just the season of my life where I just felt horrible no matter what I was in. But this... I do really like it. I don't know if I'll wear it that much because again, cowls really aren't my thing. And because this falls so far from my neck, um, I don't know if I'll get a lot of wear out of it in Michigan because Michigan is cold in the fall and winter. I don't know, maybe I will. Um, or I might gift it to somebody, we'll see. But this is the shift that I, Andrew, I said I wasn't going to do that. It's a shift by Andrew Mowry. And um, yeah, I still I still love it and I think it was a really fun knit. So that is October. And then November, the local yarn store, Wool and Honey, it's not local to me, but it's a Michigan yarn store. It's in it's in Lenawee County, um, which is Traverse City area. So if this is Michigan. It's like up here. And so I think it's in Leland, Michigan. I don't know, Cedar, it's in Cedar, Michigan. And um, I had the privilege of going there when my husband and I took a quick vacation, August 2017. So it holds a little special place in my heart because we took that vacation um, I don't know, it was, we, we were supposed to, Doug was supposed to shoot a wedding for friends of ours, but then a horrible thing happened and, um, it got postponed. So we had the days off and we had just had our miscarriage. And so Doug and I went to Traverse City for the weekend and he, he was like, we can go to all the yarn stores in the area if you want. And I didn't even know Wool and Honey was there. Our friend that has an Airbnb up there and they're up there quite a lot mentioned Wool and Honey. And we're like, I was like, I've heard of that. 
let's go check it out. So we went to go check it out and it's my dream store because the two big yarns that they carry are Quince & Company, which is the love of my life. If you are a returning viewer, you know how much I love Quince & Company. And the other is Brooklyn Tweed, which I also love, but isn't always in my price point. So when the Wool & Honey shop was having a knit along for the Wool & Honey sweater, uh, they were giving a discount, like a 20% off discount of Brooklyn Tweed if you bought it for the cow. And they threw in the pattern and all that stuff. So I was like, this is the perfect time to knit the wool and honey sweater. I wanted to anyway. So I don't know how this is going to look with a t-shirt underneath. But we're going to try it. Because this is a sweater that I have a lot of feelings about. But I put it on yesterday. And I have different feelings about it. So I knit the size large. Which is... I think obviously too big on me. Like this is this is quite a lot of ease. I'm pretty sure I could fit Doug in here with me. Um, like it's just it's just a lot. So, but the the issue that I have with this sweater is that I should have knit the extra large for the amount of ease that the pattern calls for and for the bust measurement that it called for, I should have knit the extra large when I knit this. And so I knit the large, the size down, because people were talking about how it was, it was very oversized and it was very big. Um, I got gauge, but it's just, it was, it's too big and I felt so disappointed. I felt, I don't know, I, it was just, again, one of those things where I just felt so bad about myself that I was like, oh, yeah, you failed at something else, Stacey. Good job. But now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like it. It's still big. Like, it's still big. But I think this is a great, cozy sweater. I do want to knit this again in a size down. I think I'll knit a medium. And I want to use Brooklyn Tweed again, but I'm not going to do yellow. I felt the need to do yellow because it's wool and honey because I have issues with not using the colors or something similar to what the pattern shows because I have I struggle with that sometimes but this sweater proved to me that one I do like mustard yellows I do and I think they look good on me with my coloring but they're not my favorite. Um, it's just sometimes I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't like color all the time. I'm very much a neutral kind of girl and some colors are neutrals to me. Like a dusty pink is very much a neutral to me, but I do like the mustard yellow. I think next time that I knit this, I might knit it in a gray. Sorry. Or um or like a pinky gray. The postcard excuse me, the postcard colorway from Brooklyn Tweed I think would be gorgeous in this. But yeah, so again, wool and honey. It's it's a little bigger than I wanted, and I will definitely size down when I knit it. Again, eventually, I don't know when that will be or if I will ever, but if I do, I'll knit a medium. Yeah. So, here it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I actually really like this. The more that I'm looking at it, the more I really like it. Which is really exciting because ooh, I've loved this sweater since it came out. I just, I'm a big fan. I'm gonna wear this all the time now. <laughs> I I really am. I kind of want to keep it on. If it wasn't 80 degrees outside, I probably would. So, this is October. Not October, November. November. And I did almost finish it for the knit along, but I was a cuff too short. Oh, that's another thing. All pattern these are not supposed to be almost full length. They're supposed to be like here. But I have really short arms. My arms are much shorter than my height. 
my wingspan is shorter than my height. And so um, I just have really short stubby arms and hands and feet. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anyway, next is December. So December, I cast on The Night Shift by Andrew Mowry. Um, I actually got a lot of these skeins of Dream State as gifts from my husband. <laughs> I think I bought three and he bought me three, which was super sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the Night Shift. I used almost the exact same colors. Oh, this is Brooklyn Tweed Loft in Hayloft. Hayride? Hayloft. Hayloft, right? I think it's Hayloft. Anyway, so this is Spin Cycle Dream State in six colors. I started at Cataclysm and I moved into Nostalgia, Rusted Rainbow, um, Deep Bump, and there's also Mississippi Marsala, Night Shades. Is that the color? No, Shades of Earth. Um, is that all of them? Yeah. So I don't like this section right here, which is the Rusted Rainbow section, and part of me thinks I might rip out all of this to where Nostalgia ends and do different colors here. But I still love this. This is my favorite part, this part right here. I love that part. <sighs> but yes, Night Shift by a... I almost said by Andrew Mauer. Stacy, get it together. Huh. <sighs> yes, yeah, so this is the night shift, and this was just a nice little palette cleanser. I just wanted to knit something fun. I'm obsessed with spin cycle, so I wanted to use the yarn. Um, I wish it was bigger. I wish it was longer. I like the depth, but I just don't think it's wide enough. So it's barely, again, my wingspan. I'm 5'2", and I think my wingspan is like 4'11". <laughs> so, yeah, it's beautiful. I just wish there was more of it, which is hard to do with this shape because the further down you go, the deeper the shawl gets, and I think it's plenty deep. Yeah, I just wish it was longer so I could wrap it better because this is, because I feel like, because this is where I want my tails, and I feel like this is just too tight. <laughs> so yeah there it is and then in December I made my make nine most of my make nine was not Andrew Mowry which was shocking but the one that was on there was the weekender so I'm not going to put this sweater on because it does not fit over my head comfortably my dog is mad that people are walking past the house. Oh, this puppy. Okay, so I knit The Weekender. I love The Weekender. I really do. Um, and I love the yarn I used. I used Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in Flagstone Heather, which is the dark gray, and Oyster Heather, which is the oatmeal -y color. And I was inspired to use, um, to use Knit Pick Stroll Tweed by Candace of Pin Feathers and Pearls. I think she used like a navy and a cream for hers and I just loved the way the marl looked. And so yeah, I, I copied the yarn choice and chose different colors and I'm really happy with how it came out. I love it, but the Kitchener, the tubular bind off is just, this is it. There's no more give. It's just very tight. And the three needle bind off is also very tight. So I'm going to give this away to one of my friends who has a smaller head than I do and see if she likes it. If not, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll give it to one of my sisters-in-law if my friend doesn't want it, who is their tiny in high school and middle school. So yes, but this was the turning point for the most part, um, in my year of Andrea, where I really just started focusing on what I liked, the colors that I liked, and just stopped caring 
about following trends, following what yarns things were called for, what yarn in the pattern <laughs> was called for, um, the colors Andrea chose, the colors other people were choosing, and I just went with my gut and I went with what I liked. So this was my turning point and I'm really excited about it. So February hits and that's my birthday month. So I wanted to cast on something super special for my birthday month. So I cast on the sweater to end all sweaters. The sweater that will replace almost every ready to wear sweater that I have in my wardrobe. And that is the Ronin and it is still a work in progress because this thing is a beast. So it's not, it's not that it's the oversized thing. It's not, it's not so much the length. It's the amount of brioche in this sweater that's taking me a long time and is very daunting. Also this, these increases I'm obsessed with. So anyway, here is my Ronin. I cast off the body the like last week. So I need to knit the sleeves. So I'll knit the sleeves down. I'm going to knit more stockinette than brioche. I think, I think I'll only do like a three inch brioche cuff rather than like, I don't know, it calls for like six or something crazy. Did this fall a little bit? Let me, is that better? Okay. So I'm going to knit more stockinette on the sleeves than brioche so that I will actually get it done. And then it's a giant brioche shawl collar with short rows in the back. So it's going to take a while, but I'm hoping that I'll have it done to wear this winter. That's my goal. If I can have it done before February, I'll be very happy. And I really just need to buckle down and knit on it. If I knit both of the sleeves and I pick up the collar and I commit to knitting a bit on it every day, I think it'll get done pretty quickly. Maybe I'll have it for Rhinebeck. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But I'm using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Soot colorway, which is just this perfect dark gray. Oops. Yeah. But I love it. I, I'm going to wear the crap out of this sweater once it is done. So, <laughs> costume change again. Um, so March hits and I don't realize it and I'm just knitting away on my Ronin, trying to get most of it done. <sighs> Doug's going out of town for work again and like all of this stuff is happening and Eliza's teething and she gets a cold and just trying to balance <laughs> work and being a mom and most of you you get the, I, everybody gets the struggle of trying to find a balance between work and life. So I'm just trying to figure that out and also trying to fit in knitting when I can. And um, I forget, I almost forget to cast on my March, not sweater, but my March cast on for my year of Andrea. So I was putting together a mini skein kit for yarn support, which um, was the Gap Toe Sweater by Skenanigans. And these four colors were next to each other in the packaging and I fell in love with the fade that I was like, that's it, I'm going to dye up my fade and just, that will be my March cast on. But I couldn't figure out between the Comfort Fade Cardi, which is what I went with, or the So Faded Pullover. I just like cardigans better for the most part. So I went with the Comfort Fade Cardi and I used four colors. So I start off with Birch, which is just a cream um, with dark gray black speckles. So it reminds me of birch trees, which are all over Northern Michigan. Uh, I have I Smell Snow, which is a classic stress knits colorway that was inspired by Gilmore Girls. I have Grubby, which is just a nice grubby grayish brownish pink. And then I finished it off with Prudence, which is a brownish pink. So I love this fade. 
and I love this sweater so much. It is a sweater that I will wear out and about, but this has been living on the back of the back of my office chair and I've put on if I get too chilly because we've had the windows open the past few nights and it's been hot, <laughs> but there were a few moments where like the fan was on above me and wind was coming in, a breeze was coming in and it's just nice. Okay, so Comfort Fade Cardi. I knit the extra large, right? Yes. I could have gotten away with a large, but I wanted this to be oversized. Here it is. This is my Comfort Fade Cardi. This is it. And I love it. It's one of my absolute favorite things I've ever knit. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's cozy. <laughs> it's definitely a comfort knit. It's wonderful. Um, and it zoomed. So the body went really, really quickly because you are fading. And you just kind of want to get to the next color, then you want to fade it in. And oh, it's great. The sleeves went really quickly too. Um, I did have to cut them short because again, they were to here. And I was supposed to do um, a backwards fade and end with birch at the top but it would have been they would have been way too long this sweater hasn't been blocked yet <laughs> I'm a little nervous to block it and how much it's gonna grow so I'm just kind of avoiding that <laughs> but yes so that the longest part of it was the collar because it's a short row collar so like look at that that's all from that line to here that's all short row shaping. So it takes, it takes a bit and it takes a little mind power to set it up correctly. But other than that, I love this knit so much and I'm going to wear it all the time. It's just a perfect dreamy sweater. Yeah. So that is March, April. So I did the same thing because I started this like the last day of March and then I knit it most of April. I almost forgot <laughs> to cast on my my April cast on. So I decided to go with something I know and I love and I knew what I wanted to change to make it a more wearable sweater for me and that is the Weekender part two. So, oh, this is something I'm frogging. Okay, so this is a lesson in everyone makes mistakes. And sometimes the mistakes are just too obvious that you can't fudge it and that you can't ignore it. So, mistake number one. The front side, the front uh, faux seam moves. <laughs> so if you can tell, it moves slightly this way. And that was something I was like, I can live with that. That's fine. And then I added more stitches to the neck bind off and I did it looser and it fit really well. But then I looked at it and like, this is all coming apart. Same here. It's just sloppy. And I don't know how that happened. And then when I was three needle binding off, do you see how these don't match up? It's, is it more obvious on this side? So that should be there. Those should line up and it just doesn't. And then I was like, you know what? It'll be fine. I can sew up the neckline and I will make it work. So then I knit a full sleeve. The stitch markers are still on. And I tried it on and I was like, I can't live with this. I can't. I can't be proud of this knit because of how bad it is. So I put it in timeout and I'm going to frog it. I'm going to knit the same sweater, same yarn, but it's going to take a timeout. I just don't feel like doing it. So it's going to be a labor of love, especially because I was alternating skeins in the body and this is going to be a two person project. So when Doug feels like it, we're going to do this. So then I wanted to take a break and knit something smaller 
And Andrea Mowry had another um, challenge, four day Memorial Day challenge uh, for May and for her sh shifty hats. So her mosaic knitting hats. So there was like the Tincture hat, the Ghost Ranch hat, and then the Shift Along hat. I decided to go with the Shift Along hat. I had yarn, this yarn was put aside for the Ghost Ranch hat, but I decided to go with the Shift Along hat. So I used, this is Spin Cycle in two colorways on two different bases. The Marl is Versus. I don't remember what this is called. It's like stay ready or slow and steady, something like that. And then the pink is wallflower. I love it. This is one of those things where I love this color of spin cycle. I just didn't know what I would put it in. And so a hat fit the bill. It was perfect. And that's, that's just the hat. And then June. So the penultimate project. I decided to do a so faded pullover, which I really wanted to do for a really long time. And I just didn't know the perfect colors and I was dyeing yarn for my first show vending in person or just vending in general. And these four colors were next to each other and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna cast on and that's what I'm going to knit. So that's what I did. So I finished this the other day. Um, here it is. And it fits really well. I don't know how it'll look with my <laughs> v-neck underneath, but this is, it fits exactly how I wanted it to fit. I still haven't woven in the ends on the sleeve, so you got some dangles. But here it is. <laughs> so it fits exactly how I wanted it to fit towards the top of my jeans. And yeah, it looks a little bunchy with the shirt underneath, but Sleeves are perfect. I love it. This is the, excuse me, the extra large size again. Uh, the sleeves are a little big, but it's still, it's a cozy, it's a cozy sweater. I'm, the purpose of this was not to be something that I wear um, when I want to look nice. This is like, a sweatshirt sweater. That's what I wanted. It's my t-shirt and jeans, but a sweater kind of sweater. That's what I wanted it to be. So it does exactly what I wanted. And I love it so much that I'm currently knitting my daughter, Eliza, the so faded pint size version, but in the opposite fade. So the yarn is Stress Knits yarn on my favorite base. It's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And the lightest pink is Palm Lines, and it goes into Grubby, into Rattle, and into Dahlia. I love it. So Eliza's sweater starts with Dahlia and will end in Palm Lines. And I just, we're gonna, <laughs> I haven't taken photos of this yet because I wanna finish her sweater before. Um, and this is gonna be her Rhinebeck sweater. So it's gonna be super cute if it's cool enough. All right, and then the last, the last year of Andrea project. Most, if you are returning to this channel, you know what it is. It's the stone crop pullover. So it is the Rhinebeck sweater for this year. My allergies are getting me. Sorry for the sniffles and the out of breath, but my nose just filled up and I just, I need to blow it, but I'm almost done. So, here it is. <laughs> this is the stone crop pullover. It is, it's amazing. So I used Quince & Company Finch in the Odwin colorway. I had a sweater quantity of Odwin to make, um, to make a fingering weight sweater that I forget right now. And it just didn't pan out. So I have a bunch of it. So like I, it was the main color in my Harlow hat. Yeah, so I used it as the main color in this sweater. And the contrast color is Mississippi Marsala Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool, which is one of my favorite spin cycle colorways. I love this sweater so much. I knit the size five. 
which I think is a 46 inch bust. So it gives me about four inches of positive ease and it fits like a dream. Um, if you want to see me wear it, go back to the last episode of the podcast. I think it's episode 91 and you will see me in it. Um, or you can go over to my Instagram page and see it there. But I'm just really hot right now and I don't want to put wool on my body. This sweater is amazing. It has bobbles encased in one by one cables, it has simple color work, and it's just perfect. It, it hits where I want it to hit. I love this sweater. This was a sweater. So I'm still not 100% confident in my body, but when I put the sweater on and my husband was taking the pictures for my finished object photos, um, I've never felt so confident in my entire life. It feels so good to feel so good in your own skin, and I haven't felt that way in a really long time, and this sweater helped me get there, and I just, I love it so much. This is my Rhinebeck sweater. I'll be wearing it at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival this year because I'm lucky enough to go. Doug has a work event that's putting him out on the coast. So he's, he's going to be in Rhode Island, so we're going to meet up in New York together with our daughter Eliza, and I'm just so excited about it. Um, I get a lot of questions about the neckline, so <coughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what just brought on allergies, but here we are. Um, okay. Um, I get a lot of questions about what I did to make the neckline wider. I didn't do anything. <laughs> the issue with my bot, not the issue, but the thing with my body is my upper bust is almost five inches different than my full bust. That's a huge difference. Um, I've always had a bigger bust. It's just the nature of my body and my genetics. And no matter what I do, they're just, they've always been large when I was, I had a D cup in high school. Like it's just, it is what it is. So, um, yeah. So when I cast on for the size five, which is 46 inches of the full bust, the way that patterns are usually graded is it's proportional and I'm not proportional here. This is not proportional to the rest of my body because if I just, if I'm here, you would never know that I have boobs. <laughs> so, um, it's just the nature of the way the pattern's graded. So I don't know how to fix that. Sorry, I wish I could help because I know a lot of you have mentioned that you like the way my neckline looks. I was actually kind of bummed because I like a closer neckline, but I still really like it. Okay. So that's it. Those are the projects I knit for my year of Andrea. If you hear that squeak, it's my chair. <laughs> it's making sounds. Um, yeah, so that's my year of Andrea. It's It was July of 2018 to through July of 2019. It's 13 projects, one of which is still on the needles and one of which is going to be frogged because I don't like it and I made too many mistakes. Some things will be given as gifts. It was just, it was such an amazing journey. Thank you so much to all of you who have reached out about how much you love it or have started your own year of Andrea's. I highly recommend it, doing it with any designer that you love. I could do it with other designers as well. Um, it's just, I'm so happy and this is not the last Andrew Mallory pattern I will knit. I'm currently knitting the So Faded Pint Size and the Marley Shawl, which I'll show off on the next podcast. But thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. If you are new, please like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. And if you are returning, thank you so much for checking me out. It means more than you will ever know. So with that, I will let you go, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time. Bye.